the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Hello, everybody. Thank you for saying yes. I'm going to keep Sunday holy. Some of you were with us last Sunday, and you started to put into your life those practices of keeping Sunday holy, keeping the Sabbath holy for Christians. Diane, what day is the Sabbath? Sunday. Sunday. Good answer. Diane. Jess? Well, I was going to ask you a different question, but that's okay. <laughs> Sunday. Sunday is Sunday. Right? And you cut out social media. You cut out the news. You cut out those negative voices. But the devil's always going to try to be whispering to you to pull you away. For the times maybe you said yes to sin, for the times that I said yes to sin, let's say no to that now. And yes to the Lord Jesus. Prepare our souls to receive him in communion, here sacramentally, there spiritually. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of hirelings? He is a slave who longs for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, When shall I arise? Then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Praise, Praise the, the Lord, Lord who heals the, the brokenhearted. Broken Praise the Lord for he is good. Sing praise to our God, for he is gracious. It is fitting to praise him. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem, the dispersed of Israel he gathers. Praise, praise the, the Lord, Lord who heals the, the brokenhearted. Broken he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He tells the number of the stars. He calls each by name. Praise, praise the, the Lord who heals the, the brokenhearted. Broken hearted. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. To his wisdom there is no limit. The Lord sustains the lowly, the wicked he casts to the ground. Praise, Praise the Lord, Lord who heals the brokenhearted. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have recompense. But if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with the stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak I became weak, to win over the weak, I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening, after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak, because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let us go on to the nearby villages that I may preach there also, for this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. All right, so this, this week at the parish, we're doing the St. Blaise Blessing. St. Blaise, the patron saint of firemen, the patron saint of hot sauce, <laughs> the patron saint of sprinters, maybe, right? Uh, St. Blaise miraculously, uh, God through St. Blaise miraculously healed thousands of people after he went to heaven. In his lifetime, several people and lots of animals. He healed animals. So Cragley, many of you know, has been sick. Uh, I, give, I think I give a little update at the end of the Mass. We're filming this homily uh, a couple days after we filmed the Mass because of the calendar here in the parish. Uh, and Cragley had a big old tumor removed and sadly was cancerous. Um, so we just got to watch it. And so that's what we're going to be doing. So thanks for everybody for praying for Cragley. But St. Blaise helped heal animals. All these different animals were coming to the cave where he was hiding out because he was being persecuted um, because the Romans wanted him dead because he was a Catholic and he was a Catholic bishop. And we were hunted and persecuted for hundreds of years in the beginning of Christianity. Anyway, he healed animals. God through him healed animals. God through him healed a boy who was choking uh, on a, uh, a fishbone. And what did he do? He grabbed these two candles and he made the sign of the cross over the boy and the boy was healed. And so we still bless people through his intercession is the Catholic way we talk about it. We ask St. Blaise to pray for you. Uh, and what we do is we take these two candles, we make the sign of the cross, we put it on your neck, and we ask God to bless you. Do we light the candles? It depends. In the 1980s with the hairspray, it wasn't a good idea to light the candles. Because <laughs> people's hands would go up in flame. Right? No. Uh, I don't know if they've ever lit them. Maybe we will here at the parish. So let me bless you with the intercession of St. Blaise, give you the quick homily today, uh, and then get you back to the Mass. Or, and, or, and for those who are just listening to this, God bless you. All right, so... Through the intercession of St. Blaise, Bishop and Martyr, may Almighty God deliver you from every disease of the throat and from every other illness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, now you can have Adam's apple pie, right? I always think when I hold, I love holding these as a dude. I think like, like, I don't know, like Batman has his like equipment belt of all these like weapons and stuff. And like, I don't know, like stuff to help him be a superhero. I always think like these would be like cool, like, I don't know. Weapons Against Evil. Let's talk about that. So many of you will remember this commercial. I'm going to fill in the blank here. Let's fill in the blank. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a... Some of you are like, what are you talking about, Father Dave? Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. It was a commercial back in the day for Alka-Seltzer. And um, I never met that man. al Caselzer. <laughs> but he went around giving people lots of relief from gastric problems, Alka-Seltzer. So Jesus, in today's gospel, heals Peter's mother-in-law, is healing all these people in the town of Capernaum, is casting out demons. Is he giving people relief, yes or no? Yes. And what he's doing back then is helping you and me today. How is that helping you and us today? That it's real important. And so I usually put it like this, and I will. If Jesus wanted people to get sick, would he have ever cured the sick, yes or no? No. If, he, if it was God's will that people get ill, you would never find Jesus curing the sick, unless, of course, he doesn't have integrity, unless he's not God, 
And the Jews are going to throw this at him, right? They're going to say, well, it's by the devil that he cast out devils. And Jesus is like, oh, yeah, if it's by the devil that I cast out devils, then if a kingdom is divided against itself, how can it stand? It's like, you know, mic drop, right? And what we believe and what the scriptures will teach is, especially in the book of wisdom, God did not make death or disease or any harmful thing among men in the book of Genesis, that it was sin that put disease in the world. It was sin that put death in the world. It was sin that put disorder and brokenness between men and women and humanity in the natural world. And everything got out of control and, and got out of order because of sin. It wasn't God's doing. And so when Jesus shows up in that town, he starts healing the sick. That's really good news, certainly for them. Do you think those people, when they got healed, were they like, when, Peter, when Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law, do you think she was grumbling against God? No, she immediately goes to serve them. And she's waiting on them. I think maybe one of the bloopers, I, I talk a little more about that. But, right, the people are probably praising God because of what he's doing. How is this good news for you and me? So many people today, you know, they get sick. They, God forbid, right, they have cancer. Like my brother, right? We don't know how he got it. Right? Some people get sick because their bodies are weak. Some people get sick because they take a medical procedure that is highly recommended and backed but not tested, and then that makes them super ill. And they get autoimmune diseases, and they get other kinds of strange cancers, and other kinds of strange things start happening because of experimental stuff that was pushed on people. Right? That happens. Right? Other people get sick because of all kinds of reasons. Right? And then when people get sick, they blame God. They get angry at him. God, you did this. You gave me diabetes. You gave me heart disease. You gave me cancer. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't get angry at God for that. Like, I get that you want to because God is all powerful. That makes sense. Right? But what you don't realize, if, like, take your brain. And you know I'm always asking you questions. Take your brain to the scriptures. If Jesus wanted people to get sick, that was God's will. Why is he healing them? He didn't do it. Oh, yeah? No, he didn't do it. If he wanted people to die, why is he raising the dead? If God is a God of love, what kind of God of love would make, you know, diabetes and cancer and ALS and all these now strange cancers that are super rare that are becoming, a, you know, a lot more popular? And, well, either something's, they either weren't never super rare or something is making them less rare. What is that? You can fill in the blank. Right? What kind of God would make that? What kind of God would will the death of a husband or a wife or a kid? or a friend, or a parent, right? And this is part of what I teach at every tragic funeral, and sadly we've had a lot more. There's a lot more men dying in their 40s to the early 60s. A lot more men dying, and like, sadly we talk about this, right? So you get a little taste of that today. So this is how it helps us, because you should know when you have any kind of illness come into your life, that wasn't God's will. He didn't do that to you. And if you get angry at him, it's like, Getting angry at the mailman for the rain. And this literally is what I use at these funerals to try to help people see through this. Right, you, can you get angry at the mailman for the rain? Yes or no? I say yes. You can get angry at the mailman for the rain, but you would be the idiot. The mailman has to work in spite of the rain. He did not do it, and he's there no matter what. Right? Neither rain nor sleet nor fear of night, except for government holidays, <laughs> they're delivering the mail. Right? All right, so Jesus in this town is healing the sick. That shows us that's not his will that we be sick. And what does Jesus do? He goes and he prays in early in the morning. He gets up early. And right now that shows us something. That it's, you know, sometimes the best time to pray are super early in the morning or late at night. Jesus probably learned that from St. Joseph, right? St. Joseph probably prayed early in the morning. And then he had his shop, his wood shop. And he's doing carpentry work or going to a house and, you know, I don't know, putting up a roof or something like that. Um, building a back deck or whatever the, you know they would do and then at night time they'd have family time dinner time and then St. Joseph probably prayed in the evening right he needed some space to get away from his wife because she just wants to talk all day right he's like all right Mary chill out right now maybe you gentlemen out there know what I'm talking about right? Right? St. Joseph comes home and says Mary how was your day I'm sure it was lovely right she's she has to carry the water she's got to work and like all that stuff but anyway when the day starts, sometimes it can get away from you. And so having that habit and that discipline of praying early in the morning and praying late at night is really helpful. So Jesus does that. That's a good model for us. But in that time of prayer, Jesus, what is he focusing on? We know what he's focusing on because everyone finds him and, and they're like, hey, Jesus, all this town, there's more people that want to find you. He's focusing on what his mission is. So the mission of al Kaselzer is to give people relief. Is Jesus' mission to give people relief? Yes or no? Say no. 
Yes, him doing his mission will give us relief, but that his purpose is not to relieve us. His purpose is to save us. God so loved the world, John 3, 16, right? He gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. Jesus is coming into the world, and this is why casting out demons is important. He's coming into this world to save us. He's not coming into this world to relieve and heal every single sick person of all of their sicknesses. His healing of the sick is pointing to a deeper sign of him healing humanity from the sickness of sin that the devil introduced to this world. People tend to forget the story where it doesn't start with Adam and Eve. There was a previous rebellion that happened in the angelic order that God makes angels and he makes them free, just like he makes us free. And if he makes you free, you can use your free will to help someone, to give someone else relief. Or you can slap someone in the face and you can cause harm and spit on people and, and whatever, you know. If you're free, you can, use any, you can use that freedom for anything, to harm others or to help others. And one of the angels used its freedom for itself, to think of its own glory and didn't want to participate and play with others and cause the rebellion, and then introduces this idea of sin into the, human, into the human world, into Adam and Eve, and they say yes to it, right? Eve is free, she says yes to sin. Adam is free, he could have said no to his, what his wife wanted to do, but he says yes, right? Like many boyfriends, you have a girlfriend that wants to sin, well, I guess we'll just have to do what you want to do. No, you say no to that. Adam said yes, and here we are, right? And Sin throws everything into chaos. And the, you know, the wages of sin are death, right? And so you have now disease and death and brokenness again, and the whole history of hurt. All right, so that happens. So God is coming into the world to solve that. Right, if you think of like, you know, imagine, it would be a crazy world where you would have scientists that would like find diseases and then say, you know what we're gonna do? You know, we're luckily, this disease does not hurt humans, but what we're gonna do is like, I mean, this would be incredibly stupid or incredibly arrogant. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna have a special place where we're gonna find diseases, and then we're gonna like hop them up. We're gonna increase the ability of this disease to make it more deadly so that it could harm and kill humans. That's what we're gonna do so that then we could develop a defense against it in case that ever like happened. But it didn't happen, but we're gonna make it happen. And you think that, the, like that must be stupid. And that you think people would say, oh, we found this terrible disease in this strange creature, and luckily it doesn't hurt humans. Thank you, God. This disease doesn't hurt us. As opposed to saying, if we can make it hurt us, that's either, again, incredibly arrogant, stupid, or evil. So let's say people do this, and they find a disease, and then they, like, torture animals, and they put them in cages. Now, let's say ferrets, maybe, right? Ferrets or minks or something like that. And they put them in cages next to each other, and this one is sick. And then they, they make it, like, in an area where it can cough and sneeze on these other ones. And these poor other creatures, instead of having a wonderful life, now they're getting tortured, right? So that they can see if they can get this disease to spread to this one, and they can give it new functions. And they can maybe even patent a small area of a, take, like, a, I don't know, a grappling hook ability of one you know, kind of virus and give it to another and patent that so they can make money on this kind of thing, right? This is horrific. I'm sure this would never, ever happen in the real world because it's insane to do this. Oh, but maybe big money can help this because who knows, right? And so then you can create a new capacity for a disease. So let's imagine a virus that is, you know, gets people sick, like the cold, and then they give it a new capacity to cause poison ivy kind of bubbles. Imagine that. Right? And if you have this virus, you get really sick, but then you get all this crazy like bubbles and blisters and you just want to itch, itch, itch. I used to get poison ivy a lot as a kid, not so much anymore, right? So they give a virus a new function, let's say, right? They give it a new, it has gained something, right? All right, so let's say whatever, you're living your life and then suddenly you get this virus. Right? And this virus is in your bloodstream, but it also manifests this like itching ability. And you're getting hives and you're getting these blisters, right? These uh, bubbles. And so you go to the doctor. Why do you go to the doctor? Because I'm sick, Father Dave. Yes, you go to the doctor because you're sick. You go to the doctor because you have this thing in your bloodstream. And you go to the doctor because you're itching like a madman or a madwoman. You got all these, you know, you're like taking baths in calamine lotion. You look pink or you're, you know, the clear version, you know, you look crusty. You say, doctor, help me. Is it your doctor's mission to stop every single bubble from itching, yes or no? 
No. Your doctor's mission is to help you get well. And so he or she is going to give you, let's say, how about an antiviral? Because you don't just fight viruses, for example, with vaccines, there's antivirals. Why wouldn't you only limit yourself to one way to fight a virus? Why wouldn't you use antivirals, right? So he's gonna give you an antiviral that will in fact help kill the thing in your bloodstream. And that's a good idea. That's not a novel idea to you, Father Dave, I'm not a doctor. It just makes sense. I was a philosophy major, I think about things. That seems to make sense. So your doctor gives you an antiviral, and maybe they give you a topical solution that helps reduce the itching of some of the bubbles. But your doctor's purpose is to solve the disease that, that's deep inside of you, and not only the manifestation of the bubbles on your epidermis, on your skin, right? Jesus, his mission is not to heal every single sick person. His mission is to save all of us. And he does so by himself experiencing the full weight of the devil's decision, right, of sin and death. And he sees and, and knows how it hurts us, right? When, when you have a dog or a cat that's sick and it looks to you and it's in pain, that hurts you because you see it suffering. Right? Jesus sees human suffering and human evil, and it hurts him, and he'll suffer and die from it. And then he rises from the dead. And he saves us. Right? And that's his mission. When you find him again healing the sick, it's pointing forward to the, like, hey, I'm healing the underlying disease that's causing all of these bubbles. All right? But it gets even better. Again, the devil has free choice. And so it introduces sin and disease and death. There's that. All right? But what God has decided to do is like flip that on the devil's head. How does he do that, Father Dave? He does it by one, eliminating the outcome. So, you know, sin and disease and death are no longer going to lead to eternal ostracization from God if you simply believe in Jesus. If you profess your faith in him and give him your life and trust him, then you share in his death and you share in his resurrection. So there's that. Second, he has chosen to reward you and me for how we deal with the itchy bubbles. And the itchy bubbles are suffering that comes to us, right? Job in the first reading, right? He's a man of faith and the devil thinks, well, I'm gonna throw disease at Job and his loved ones and cause all this suffering and I can get Job to deny you, God. And God believes in Job. And the challenge for Job is to continue to believe in God and not lose faith in him, not speak bad about God, even when suffering and disease comes to Job, right? And that's Job, you'll have to read the book of Job to find out what happens, right? So the job, the job for each of us is to maintain faith in God, even when we see incredible suffering in the world, and even when disease comes into our life. Jesus does not lose faith in his Father, even when he's suffering on the cross. And so what God has decided to do is not just flip the outcome of the devil's decision, but he says, you know, if my people endorse, carry the cross, is how we say it as Christians, if they endure their suffering with faith, I'm going to reward them. And if they help relieve some of the suffering of other people along the way, I will reward them. When I was hungry, you gave me to eat. Come into your father's house. When I was thirsty, right? someone who was super thirsty, you gave me a drink. When I was sick right, or, or in prison, you visited me. That like what God has decided to do is to pull the rug or the carpet or the tablecloth out from the devil's decision. So the devil's pleased that creation is now suffering and broken. And God says, all right, well, I'm going to solve all of that at its core. And I'm going to reward all my people for the way that they endure and relieve and give aid to people who are suffering. And that gets the devil pissed off, frankly. Sorry, I don't know another way to say it. Gets him really angry. But that's a better way to say it. Right? Don't say that if you're a kid. All right? <laughs> so for us, right? How does this relate to us this week? So your mission is your vocation. Right? You're a husband, you're a wife, priest, you're a nun, you're a mom, you're a dad, you're a grandfather, you know, a grandmother, right? You, you have your vocation. And in your prayer times, in the morning and at nighttime, God clarifies and strengthens you for that. But along the way, if you have opportunity to help give ease to someone in their suffering, to give a little bit of relief to someone, do it. And that could be simply a joke. You see someone struggling in an awkward situation, make a joke not at their expense, but make a joke to ease the suffering. Or someone's coming to your house, you know, can you do something to give them a little bit of rest? Or visit the sick, you know, feed the hungry, help at an animal shelter. Like, you can't save everybody. God can. 
Right? You can't give relief to everybody. You're not Alka Seltzer, but you can give relief to somebody. And every day I bet there's someone in your life that you can look to give a little bit of relief to. That is your secondary mission. Your primary mission is your vocation, right? To witness to God's life and love in the world as the way you live your marriage first, if you're married. And then second, being a parent, right? That should be a parent, that your marriage comes first. And then if you're a grandparent or a widow or a widower, being occupied with the things of God, right? We can't help everyone, but we can help someone. And there's lots of someones who need to know that God is with them. And this is why God sends people like St. Blaise. This is why God continues to send saints that heal us, because he's letting us know, I'm on the side of good, of healing, of relief, and of saving you and me. One God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Raise our prayers to Almighty God. For church leaders, May the Holy Spirit continue to inspire them in faithfully preaching the good news of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For elected officials, may God grant them integrity in protecting all who are vulnerable, especially the poor, the elderly, and the unborn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who struggle with disabilities, may God's strength accompany them in their hardships let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of us gathered in this holy place, may the grace of this sacrament transform us in the image of Christ's love and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who have died, may our loving God soon bring them to eternal union with him in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the end to coronavirus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For peace in the world, especially the Holy Land, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those suffering from cancer, that they may be healed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And now for those petitions we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our military men and women, and we pray for parents also of young people who are going to join the military, that they all be kept safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who struggle with their mother-in-laws and for mother-in-laws who struggle with their sons and daughters-in-laws. May Jesus, the bringer of peace, help them all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, turn toward us and hear the prayers you inspire us to ask. We ask them in faith through Christ our Lord.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant and pray that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints who declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and David our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, St. Martha, St. Therese, St. Jude, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your, said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The storms of life are raging. Lord, stand by me. When the current pulls me under, Lord, stand by me. When the rising waters toss me like a ship upon the Stand by me, stand by me, stand by me, lift me up from the restless sea, when I am lost, when love can't be found, when no one cares, Lord, stand by me. Stand by me when my enemies surround me. Lord, stand by me when the tyrant wields his terror and the armies wage their might. When the darkness overwhelms me. Lord, stand by me, stand by me, stand by me, lift me up from the restless sea, when I am lost, when love can't be found, when no one cares, Lord, stand by me, stand by me, stand by me. Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Many of you people wanted to know how Craig is doing. Today's her first day without her big collar on. She's healing from her surgery. She had a couple scares there where we had to go to the emergency vet because her wounds were bleeding. But she's doing all right today. Right, Cracker? And she's now eight years old. How many years old is that in dog years? Seven, seven, 56. 56. Getting old, get old. We'll keep you. A um, couple other things. Sometimes I always think of this during the Mass. And I forget to tell you, it's too, I can't interrupt this part of the Mass. So when the priest starts the Eucharistic prayer, he cannot interrupt it. In fact, if I'm praying the Mass and someone has a heart attack during uh, certain parts of the Mass, I can't stop the Mass. I hope that like the people around and the nurses, if you're a nurse and you're in church and someone falls down, what should you do? Get up. You should pray for them as you're walking to go and help them, right? But uh, so there's a part of the Mass where you see the priest and what he does is he bows. He right? says, um, let me get it here in front of me. Uh, at the, time, at the time he was betrayed, I had to willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, and then the priest bows slightly. Why? We don't think Jesus did that at the Last Supper, but that part of the math is not a, it's not like a play for play of what Jesus did. It's a symbolic action, right? Jesus didn't take bread and then bow as he gave it to the disciples. He was saying yes to the suffering that was about to come. He was saying yes to the cross. And that's what that means. Jesus is assenting, not as choosing, but as allowing. He's going to allow what's going to happen, right? He's saying yes to the Father's will, not my will, your will be done. 
and he's, you know, he's kind of entering into that as he enters into human suffering, as we heard a little bit about uh, in today's homily. So everything in the Bible has lot, has meanings, and there's different layers of meanings. So remember 40? We talked about this one time, what the number 40 means. Someone just turned 40. I'm telling everybody, Jess, I realize I probably should have asked you first. Jess just turned 40 last week. Happy birthday, Jess. You wouldn't know because her hair is not gray. What does 40 mean? The appropriate amount of time. And Jess has endured a trial for an appropriate amount of time, right? And now it's time to get beyond that trial. So everything has these meanings. So Jesus in the resurrection will see St. Peter, right? And he'll say, feed my life. He said, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Why does he ask Peter that three times? Because Peter denied him three times. Why did Peter deny Jesus three times? Because Jesus healed his mother-in-law. <laughs> Brilliant! Right? And I know there's a bunch of you out there that are like, oh, I'm a good mother-in-law. Well, you know what? Your kids actually have, or your kids' spouses have that answer, not you, right? And then hopefully they tell you the truth, but sometimes the truth is hard to hear. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks for... Oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Diane. So uh, you see this little board over here with all the little cotton balls and sheep? That's because we had first penance here in the parish. Many of you guys are having first penance in your parishes. And so all those little lost and wandering sheep have been found. And that's where God finds us in the sacrament of confession, right? Well, he finds us when we repent and he brings us and he cleans us. Uh, and, he, and he's getting those children ready for Holy Communion later this year. Thank you, Diane. You can't pull the wool over Jesus' eyes. <laughs> he finds us with love. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Look at that great picture, Cragley. Are you a happy girl? Yes, you are. Important piece of this gospel. Just a small note, you'll note that Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law, which means Peter was married. Now, we don't hear of Peter's wife at this time because the, Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law and then she decides, right, she's waiting and showing hospitality. She's showing hospitality to Jesus and the, the apostles and waiting on them. And that would be a role that Peter's wife would have fulfilled. And many of you, many of you are moms and wives and grandmoms and you notice that you know being hospitable, welcoming someone to your house, and you know making stuff present to your guests and making your guests feel relaxed and welcome is something that you love to do. When I went to my best friend's uh, house when he was newly married, you know um, I've, I've known him for I don't even know twenty something years. He'll, Joe, you'll you'll tell me after he watches our mass every week. He'll call me and tell me. Well, apparently I made a big flaw because you know I went to their house, uh, him and his new wife, and it was a beautiful home at the time they have a new home now and uh you know used the restroom you know washed my hands and went back to our conversation hanging out but apparently the mistake i made is i didn't comment on the bathroom <laughs> apparently like this is a thing you have to do is comment on how clean and nice the bathroom is and how nice the candles are or whatever i don't know so i wasn't invited back for a while <laughs> and now they just renovated their bathroom god bless them and their new bathroom out there i haven't seen it yet i heard they renovated it maybe they'll invite me i'll be sure to comment upon it Right? But there's things you have to do when people are being, you know, welcoming to you into their house. That's a great joy. And Jesus says, what you do for the least, do for me. So that's a kindness. But back to this. So Peter was married because you don't have a mother-in-law unless you were married, right? Like you don't have the burden of a mother-in-law unless you have the blessing of a wife or a husband, right? And I'm sure there's some great mother-in-laws out there. There's at least two of them somewhere, maybe. Right? We'll, st we'll save our mother-in-law jokes for later. But... Peter, because we don't hear of Peter's wife welcoming Jesus and serving and being hospitable, which is really big for the Jewish people, we think of Abraham, Peter is probably a widower. That's what the church fathers think when they write about this and talk about this, that he's probably a widower, which means he you know, had a, a normal life and went through the pain and the grief of losing a spouse. But God hadn't given up on him. He doesn't give up on us, right? And here he has got a new mission for Peter. Peter. 